For those with serious food allergies, knowing exactly what you're eating can be a matter of life or death. When it comes to packaged foods, the ingredients are normally clearly on the label, plus a warning if it may contain traces of nuts or any other allergens. But when it comes to eating in someone else's house or in a restaurant, things get a little bit more complicated. So if you want to add an extra level of checking what those ingredients are, well, I've been putting some technology to the test that might be able to help. This is Nema. Now, there's a version that tests for gluten and another that tests for peanut. The idea is that you put in a small sample of the food that you're eating, as small as a pea, into one of these capsules. That goes inside the device, which syncs up to your smartphone, and you can find out whether the ingredient you can't eat is in it or not. I'm going to put both of them to the test with this cookie, which should contain gluten but shouldn't contain nuts. The device uses antibody-based chemistry, born out of MIT technology, to detect proteins or allergens. The company's algorithms then translating complex science into a smiley go-ahead-and-eat-it face, or not. This is a pricey occupation, though. Each one-time-use capsule currently setting you back five whole dollars. And the company does advise that this is an extra level of checking on top of your normal due diligence and, of course, carrying any medication. OK, well, I can confirm that the device definitely got this correct. It says that gluten has been found. It comes up here on the device and you can see here on the phone, 12.30 today, gluten has been found. If I tap on that, it gives me the option of not just making a note for myself so I remember, but also sharing the data to the NEMA database. And of course, as more people use these devices, that database will start to become a lot more valuable. Let's give the peanut tester a go. You can do this with liquids or solids. And we have a result in the form of a smiley face. During my limited experiments, the results were accurate, but I am, of course, only testing a small piece of each bit of food, so I'm working on the basis that the ingredients are consistent throughout. Whilst they are an entirely different entity, food intolerances can have a huge impact on people's lives too. I tested this at prototype stage, but now I have the finished version of Food Marble here. This is a digestion tracking device. Now, the way it works is you breathe into this little hole here and it'll track how much hydrogen there is in your breath. The idea behind this is that if you've eaten something that you haven't managed to digest properly, then a small amount of hydrogen is released into the bloodstream. That makes its way into your lungs and from your lungs into your breath. So you can figure out which foods might be affecting you negatively. Once you have a reading, you can sync that data up within the app with any sleep data or how stressed you're feeling so that you can measure up the factors to see if there's any correlation. You can manually make a note of symptoms too and you can log all the ingredients that you've eaten in a meal. So how much use are these readings taken at any given time? I think that the danger of that kind of um, result or variability would be that it might end, end up with you not knowing where you are and restricting your diet in all sorts of ways and you could compensate so that you didn't lose weight for example and become obviously malnourished but subtle deficiencies of micronutrients that are important. <laughs> But there is a secondary use the device hopes to fulfil, and that should be able to really isolate the issue. The device can also be used to do food intolerance testing. Now, for that, it would require some fasting, and you use a different mode that's within the app, but it comes with these samples of inulin, lactose, sorbitol and fructose to test the common intolerances. It does seem to be as accurate as the big machines we use to measure hydrogen in the clinic or in the laboratory in the hospital. My problem with it being practical is that there are many people who have primarily methane producing bacterial populations and what if you've actually got something really badly wrong with your intestine and you're putting down all of these symptoms due to irritable gut um, uh, nerves and intolerance of foods and yet you've actually got Crohn's disease or celiac disease um, or what if you're a slightly older person and actually you know you think you're too busy to go to the doctors for these 
symptoms that are abdominal and yet you're sitting on a, a, a cancer somewhere. So of course these devices don't eradicate the need for a doctor's diagnosis or checking what's in your food, but for some maybe they could provide an extra layer of reassurance.